Uh, hi folks, my name is Patrick McCarthy, uh, Canadian born, Australian, living in Brisbane, uh, Australia, with a short stopover of 10 years in Japan. Nice to meet you. And I'll take the glasses off. Tell us a little bit about myself. Okay, um, and well as I mentioned, I was born in Canada, on the east coast of uh, Canada, in St. John, New Brunswick. I finished my schooling in Toronto, then went to Vancouver to study there. Um, met my wife in university, a Japanese girl. I wound up going to Japan in 1985 for the first time and uh, stayed, in, stayed for 10 years. 1995 I was recruited to uh, by the Australian Karate Federation's uh, President John Halpin to uh, come to Australia to modulate the first uh, martial arts accreditation diploma program here in Australia. Uh, it was going to be for a short time, but we just fell in love with the country and decided to stay, and that was 11 years ago. Uh, I'm an author of uh, several books, I think eight books, we have eight titles now, and oh, a dozen or more DVDs. Uh, traditionally, I'm an Okinawan karate stylist. Uh, I, have a, I have a moderate background in competitive uh, tradition uh, from the 70s to the mid-80s uh, in Canada and United States. Uh, these days I oversee a, uh, an international martial art organization called the Rukyu Karate Research Society. Um, I've done some translations of uh, the old uh, ancient uh, works. Uh, the best known by T Charles Tuttle publications is the Bubishi. Uh, uh, most of my work is historical or anthropological. I look uh, at the martial arts really from a generic point of view. And I, I make a bit of a joke uh, to the various styles and methodologies of martial arts that if you blindfolded someone and had them hit or and you hit or kicked them or threw them or did a joint lock or a pressure point or something like that, and then you took the blindfold off and, and asked them what style of martial arts was it that hit you or threw you, you know, and nine times out of ten people can't answer that question because kinetic energy travels according to only human biomechanics. So I've uh, spent most of my life as an adult looking at the martial arts from a mechanical point of view and then trying to identify what those immutable principles are that support the transfer of energy. The body only works a certain way, so my research is based largely upon that. And I like the Japanese landscape and that oriental mindset through which to deliver these common principles. Uh, beyond that, I travel extensively teaching seminars largely on patterns or kata-based applications. Uh, which deal usually with the one-on-one -on -one empty handed scenarios broken into two categories uh, impacting or seizing largely with percussive impact and then all of the other areas that seizing have joint like pressure point takedown strangulation throw grappling groundwork all the neurological uh, air and blood pressure type stuff that we use for applications and then we trace them back to the kata so if you see the two person drills of what we were doing or what we were demonstrating today and you separate that you leave the attacker alone and then reenact the solo representations, what we'll find is they're actually the individual movements that make up the kata. Hence the term, the kata is little more uh, than the sum total of its individual parts. I've probably talked too much about myself, but that was the question. I tried to squeeze as much as I could in three minutes. Thank you. How did I get started in the martial arts? That's a really easy question for me and one I've talked about many times over the years, uh, particularly with lectures and so on. Uh, after the 1964 Summer Olympics, uh, the National Film Board of Canada made a documentary on uh, our Canadian uh, judo champion at the time, Doug Rogers. Uh, it was called Road to the Olympics and they showed it at all the uh, schools in the east, uh, well they probably showed it all over Canada, but I saw it as a kid in public school uh, in the mid 60s. Um, it was probably the same impact upon me as the Bruce Lee uh, films had upon people in the early 70s. I was mesmerized with it, I knew exactly that's what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. What's in the future for me? Well. Um, I'm probably a living example of Dr. Covey's work, you know, uh, uh, prioritizing the way that we live our life. You know, it seems that the older you get, the less time you seem to simply have for yourself. So 
I tend to put things into foreseeable goals, priorities, things that are not exactly priorities, and I look at that, I have a, oh, you know, one-year plan, a five-year plan, a ten-year plan, and so on and so forth. I'm very happy in my life right now. I have a wonderful family. I have a remarkable group of students, uh, uh, an international network of like-minded people throughout the world, and we're able then to really empower ourselves by focusing on the positive things in life. You know, if you think about the contrast, there's really nothing else in life then except for focusing on the positive things because what's opposite to that or contrary to that is really not worth thinking about that long. So uh, more travel, uh, more deeply penetrating the abyss of our tradition to lay out in a very systematized methodology the historical uh, route and journey of how the martial arts came to be the way they are today, uh, more systematized and simplistic ways through which to deliver those common uh, anatomical applications that bring all of the different martial arts together, uh, ways with which to help instructors better uh, achieve their outcomes, and uh, simple formulas with which to accomplish the outcome, then look backward and divvy up the time through which to accomplish those outcomes. Well, I think everything is really outcome oriented, and I think in my immediate future, those are the the type of things that I'll probably be doing. Uh, who are some of my role models? Well, I've got a lot of different role models, you know, but I think in this contextual premise of martial arts, uh, uh, s certainly the Bruce Lee uh, would have to be uh, uh, the role model that uh, perhaps influenced me most. About thinking outside the box, about taking that narrow-mindedness and expanding the horizons of the way that we think all about the same thing. Uh, of course, who hasn't been moved like people like Martin Luther King? A anybody who teaches us about equality and uh, uh, commonalities in life and how to achieve not just uh, uh, better physical conditioning or how to cultivate the mind or nurture the spirit. Uh, so I, we could probably make a list from A to Z starting with Jesus Christ and going all the way down. Uh, I really have a lot. But I think even if it's perhaps difficult on the spot to name every one of those role models, I think that it's important that, uh, particularly for young folks in the martial arts today, that if you're able to take and identify first with a role model and characterize what it is best that you like about that role model, it helps set goals for yourself. And setting goals for yourself is a very important issue because, you know, in tr truly in essence, we are really little more than the sum total of what we think. And if we can think more about positive things or accomplishing things, you know, come on, self-esteem and, and how you feel about yourself is not, it's not found in doing daily little activities. It's by accepting challenges, setting goals. And even if you fall down, it's not how many times you fall down, my friend. It's about how many times you get back up. And I think that's the important thing about setting goals. Gee, I wish I had more time to prepare uh, a better response for this question about what are some of uh, the most memorable uh, memories that I have in the martial arts. You know, uh, there really have been, you know, I've been a competitor, I was a beginner. I'm not an alpha learner, by the way, I'm classically beta. Uh, you know, they're strong visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learners. I'm not that type of learner at all. I'm really just probably the product of stupidity and, and the naivety. I just kept going, not knowing that it would ever affect me in any particular way in life. But I, I kept at it and, you know, I have many memorable uh, experiences from the competitive world, from just coming up through the ranks in the, in the hard and blood and guts days of the 60s. Uh, and certainly international travel has provided me with uh, indelible memories of our tradition. But it wasn't, I, I suppose, until I immigrated to Japan in the mid-80s that I had an opportunity to come into contact with uh, uh, Toshiro Mifune, the, uh, the famous Japanese samurai actor. My sword teacher, uh, Sugino Yoshio, was the choreographer for the Akira Kurosawa Chambara style movies. And Toshiro Mifune, of course, was the principal star of that uh, uh, that a uh, actor for the, those movies. So I got a chance to meet and work with Mr. Mifuni many times. And, uh, you know, his presence off camera is just as powerful as it was or is on camera as well. And to just be in the same room with him, and, you know, I learned to speak Japanese. Uh, uh, I was able to then converse with him back and forth. and. 
Uh, I was invited to the Equestrian uh, Association to ride and lob arrows off of the back of galloping horses. And of course, growing up in Canada helped me a little bit with the horseback riding. But I would just say, in short, the experiences that I shared with people like Mr. Mifune, uh, the mentorship that I found with Professor Wally J over the many years uh, that we, I trained with him, uh, the opportunity to experience uh, the camaraderie that comes along with uh, sweating and training with people. How do you beat that? You know, I just couldn't, you know, somebody said, uh, you know, uh, I think it was my dad who said it first, you know, uh, two things. Number one, when you, if you ever find something that you really love, you'll never have to work a day in your life. And I really am living the dream. It's, I've never wanted to do anything else. I've always wanted to do this. It's never really been about the money and the truth be known, <laughs> you know, we started off, we didn't make very much of that money in the first place. And really the secret is, I suppose, even if we weren't making a lot of money, we'd still be doing the very same thing. Like it was said today that it's not for the money. Money is just something that comes along with the success that you meet. And the real success is measured inside, not outside. Do I have advice for other martial artists? Well, I, if you don't mind me, it's probably a bold and perhaps even borderline arrogant statement. Don't get so wrapped up in the trappings, my friends. The most important thing that any teacher or any instructor of the martial arts or life, for that matter, can do for their learners, their students, their followers, is to protect them against their own bias. Think outside the box. If it's compatibly that you're thinking about, your arm only bends one way. When I put an effort here, a fulcrum there, and use the body as a load, it's a class one lever. Or if I change the fulcrum with the effort, it's a class three lever. It causes a pain withdrawal reflex action. Just make the deduction from the abstract and that, and the whole body works the same way. The habitual acts of physical violence, which are the means by which our tradition would be a systematized methodology in the first place, are no different in Taekwondo, Chitakwan, Hapdiro, Tangsiro, Filipino, they're all the same. It's one-on-one -on -one human being. And if we step back and look at strangulations, balance displacements, percussive impact, uh, all of the things by which our tradition would be a means, we'll see that they're really all the same. They're commanded by the same mechanics. Uh, the, the human body only works a certain way. And if we can step back for a minute and see that it's the anthropology, the ethos, the uh, ancient rituals, sometimes the social and uh, terribly inflexible social or political ideology and profound spiritual conviction that tend to wrap up a tradition to, it has to be this way and it can't be any other way. Come on, we're not the Oriental, we're not Japanese, we're Westerners and we want to take the best from that mindset and that landscape and work it in our modern day culture today. So I say if there's any advice Find out what your outcome is, work, uh, your outcome is first, and then work backwards from the outcome to establish a foreseeable game plan with which to accomplish it. Don't get trapped in it, it has to be go, oh that's not Taekwondo, oh that's not Shotokan, oh that's not kickboxing, not Muay Thai. It, my friends, embrace it all, love it, it's a beautiful form of self-expression and keep in mind it doesn't matter what lies behind you or even before you for that matter contrast it with what lies within you my friends ultimately the journey is inward not really outward get involved with the pursuit not necessarily the possession the race not the finish line best of luck to you Well, uh, I guess we've come to the end of this uh, brief uh, interview. I want to say, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. Uh, we were completely unprepared for this today. Uh, not that it probably would have been any better or worse had we studied for a week on it. Um, the martial arts is truly a wonderful thing. It's a, it's a wonderful form of self-expression. And while it may, in fact, have evolved from the seat of physical violence, uh, I suppose the end result uh, of people incapable of dealing uh, uh, diplomatically with each other is, is physical violence. Is uh, even though the martial arts tends to be about physical violence, I like to think of it more along the lines of insurance. It's great to purchase it, and hopefully, my God, you never need it. Okay. So the the more you practice, the better shape you get in. Uh, the more you embrace its body of moral philosophy to govern. Uh, our behaviors, I think the better human beings we become uh, and the more that we have the opportunity to look within ourselves and nurture our spiritual content, the more prepared we become 
we become for entering into the next phase of life after death. And what could be better than that in life but to enjoy our, the opportunity of living and enjoying ourselves with everybody else and then preparing ourselves for uh, the infinity that we'll find in the life after death. So best of luck to you. Thanks very much for letting me speak.